Alright guys, I didn't think it would be a solved mystery, guys, but the guy talked, bro. The, the guy talked. The guy talked. The guy talked, man. Tupac. Shakur's. Um, murderer has went out and uh, talked to, like, they, they found out through his, like, old interviews, guys. Who... They interviewed this guy for whatever reason, and he bragged about um taking out them, and so they looked into it and they found it. I guess I don't know. Um, let's check out this story, guys. Slowly, sometimes and that was the case here, and, and, but they they got it done. Twenty-seven years after rapper Tupac Shakur was shot to death in a car in Las Vegas, a man who confessed to his bro, like I grew up with my parents talking about this man. It was all over the news. All over it. Okay, sorry, pause for a His second. involvement in the crime is behind bars. Who shot Tupac? All right, let's see what he says. For the cold of the streets. It just came from the backseat, bro. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey predicted an arrest Snap. on law and crime nearly two months ago. I think that they are going to close this case. I, I think that there is... Hey, bro, actually, what about Biggie, though? What happened with Biggie? Guys... Uh, what happened with Biggie? Like, who got Biggie, guys? I, I thought the consensus was they both got each other. That doesn't seem to be the case no more, guys. I don't understand. Let's keep watching. It's very likely going to be an indictment. Thanks for joining us here on Law and Crime. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy. Las Vegas Metro Police took Dwayne Keefe D. Davis into custody Friday. He's being held on charges related to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. The last living eyewitness to Tupac's murder is telling a story. Oh, snap. Oh, wait, he made a book with this title? And they didn't look into it? Wow, he's been a freed guy for a while then, man. What? what? Las Vegas Metro Police searched... For the most part, like, the last person to see someone alive is somebody that, you know, I mean, in murder cases, is just occasionally somebody that actually finished them off, man. Sadly. Tupac would likely still be here, guys, if, um, this guy didn't go out and freaking do what he did. What a, so, so sad. So sad. Davis's home in Henderson, Nevada, in July. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We got a search warrant. Search warrant for the red ring. You need to come out with your hands up and your hands in the At the same time. Dang, bro, they got a whole freaking. They woke up the whole neighborhood, guys. They got a megaphone, everything, bro. I'm sure they woke up some neighbors there. But dang, bro, he had a house and everything. They came for him. Time, a grand jury was investigating Tupac's murder. Tupac Shakur oh, was shot as he was riding in a car driven by Suge Knight one night in September 1996. Tupac didn't even know Suge Knight was driving the car, man. Suge Knight is also dealing with his own stuff. <clears throat> Tupac had gotten into a fight with a man named Orlando Anderson at the MGM Grand during a Mike Tyson fight. The shooting of Shakur was believed to be retaliation for the there's always something going on during boxing events, guys. There's always, like, battles and stuff going on the sidelines. It happened with the Nate Diaz thing. That's why Jake Paul was uh, battling Nate Diaz. Because they kept uh, battling in the back rooms and stuff. Fight. Keefe D later confessed that he gave Anderson, who was his nephew, the gun to shoot Tupac Shakur. He made the statement in a proffer to police, but the statement could not be used against him in court. Years later, Keefe D admitted his involvement in Tupac's murder in his book, Compton Street Legend. Many view the book as a confession. Keefe D wrote about that night, I pulled out the Glock that Zip had given me and tossed it in the back seat. Bubble Up did the driving, Baby Lane and Freaky were riding in the back. Like two rams locking horns, Suge and I looked each other dead in the eye. The terrified expression on Suge's face read, damn them N-words. 
He goes on to write, one of my guys from the back seat grabbed the Glock and started busting back. Tupac Shakur died days later and his murder. Hold on, hold on. I want to keep reading a little here. Hold on, hold on. Because I don't know the story. The first shot skinned Su Suj in the head. I thought he was dead. I heard stories that Suj used Tupac as a shield when the bullets started flying, but that's some BS. Suj was already wounded. He was the first one that got touched. As the rounds continued flying, I ducked. Tupac Shakur died days later, and his murder would remain unsolved for years. Orlando Anderson was shot to death the next year. Filmmaker Mike Dorsey worked with retired LAPD detective Greg Kading on the documentary Murder Rap. Like such a high profile, if not one of the most high profile cases out there, man. And this guy like kind of admitted to it like, just years afterwards. But they didn't really look into it or they didn't believe him or I don't know, guys. Which looked at Kading's investigation into the murders of Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. I really hope they have like DNA evidence for this case, man. <laughs> it's going to kind of be hard, bro. Like, I'm going to have to pay attention to what he says at the stand here. But it's like so many years ago. <clears throat> Guys, I, the, the details are going to be like, you know, hard to remember for some of the witnesses, I think, if it goes to trial. I spoke with Dorsey about the news that Dwayne Keefe D. Davis had been taken into custody. Um, well, this has been for me, you know, kind of a 10 year journey since we put out our doc uh, murder rap, um, which was the first documentary that put out his taped confession um, to, that, that his crew did this. And my reaction is that this has just been a very long time coming, and, um... Yeah, he just couldn't keep his mouth shut, bro. He wanted to boast about it or whatever. He wants a, he wants a story to be told. Otherwise, it's just gonna be, like, forgotten. But still, not a cool thing to do. Murder's not cool. Yeah, it's straight up. Very, very, it's just an exciting day to finally have this. We, we didn't think this was going to happen um, mm -hmm. at a certain point. It just seemed like so much time had gone by. Um, you started to wonder, is it really going to happen or not? Um, but the wheels of justice turn slowly sometimes, and that was the case here. It, but they, they got it done. You said that you thought an indictment would be coming, but now you're saying you didn't think this would ever happen. So uh, sure. do you feel like it was taking too long because we had heard some rumblings that a grand jury was looking at this? I'll just say, initially we had heard that it was going to happen very quickly, it seemed like. Uh, it seemed like an indictment was, you know, six weeks ago an indictment was like happening and then, and then nothing. And we heard the grand jury was convening. And, you know, it was very airtight. They're not telling us anything. I'm, you know, they aren't telling the public anything. So you do start to wonder after weeks and weeks go by if they're really going to pull it off or not. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, what kind of witnesses do you think they have? Because everybody else that was in that vehicle that night is dead. Damn, sure. bro. I know. Um, I mean, they got Shug. Some of the people that they've spoken to, but I... Dang, so it was like a mass shooting almost, bro. Everybody in the vehicle has to accept should. I can't disclose that, but correct. I'm will Su Will Suge um Suge Suge um testifies the question, guys. He might he might stay to the street code, guys. He might stay to. And all three of the other people that were allegedly with Keefe in the shooter's vehicle, they've all died since this happened. Um, some of the key witnesses, like Tupac's bodyguard, are is dead. Tupac himself, of course, being the closest witness, is dead. Suge Knight being the next closest witness will probably never talk about it. Um, so I don't know exactly who who they've. Snap, bro. Wait, is he? He's incarcerated, guys. Seems to be incarcerated. Looks like he's living up to it, though. Spoken to that could help them build, you know, a case around Keefe. But I do know that when Murder Rap came out, we re we heard from a lot of people that had information on this case, mm -hmm. who that had never disclosed it before, who said that it basically filled in the gaps for them of what they already knew. So my guess is that that's who they've been talking to is people like that who have pieces of the story. And when you put them all together, it's like this tapestry that comes together mm -hmm. uh, of a case. In some of these interviews, Keefe D seemed very cognizant of the fact that he had to be careful about what he said. So he obviously knew. 
Okay, yes, he is actually incarcerated. I apologize. I was just looking that up. Knew that he still was at risk of talking about Suge Knight. What they offer, like, uh, to reduce his sentence, guys. We're going to talk about this case. They probably will. I'm not going to lie. Possibly being prosecuted. They want this guy convicted for sure. But, <laughs> yeah, I really do doubt he'll go out there and, like, start talking, bro. I really do. Maybe not, though. But then he goes and writes this book. Right. Yeah, he, when he did his interview with BET for Death Row Chronicles, which came out in 2018, he had an attorney with him uh, present for that interview. And then after that, I don't know how much legal counsel he was getting. It's almost like when that came out and nothing happened to him, I think, I, I wonder if maybe he got lulled into this sense of, oh, I guess they're not going to do anything. I'll just keep doing interviews and I'll be careful on my own and do what I think you know, I can get away with saying without going too far. Um, but yeah, it seems clear. I mean, the yeah, this guy got a, this is Sage Knight, right? He got incarcerated for sending sending threats, guys. The director of a uh, great out of content. The fact that you bring a lawyer with you to an interview to make sure you don't say too much does tell you that he must have at least in the back of his mind considered that he might still be able to be prosecuted for this. Mm hmm. And the proffer deal, when he did his original, you know, uh, statement to the police about this, you know, 15 years ago, that only covers what he says that day in that meeting. If he went on CNN that night and said the same story, they would be able to. Guys, why weren't the investigators looking into it more, man? They used that interview against him. So he, right. I think he knows full well he had to be careful what he said. So what do you expect to come next? Um, obviously, KPD had to know something might be coming since a search warrant was executed on his home. Sure, we um, we don't know what the charges are yet. I'm hoping that if there's a um, that if there's a press conference today, that they'll tell us what what he's actually being charged with. Probably first degree murder, and confirm you know of course that it's for this case. Mm -hmm. um, and the next, I I would think that he might want to do a deal. Or that they might be interested in doing a deal. I don't know if anybody wants this to go to trial and have that circus uh, in Vegas. And so I, I, I would suspect that they would try to do a deal. During the hearing, they Dang, bro, he's probably going to lose his property. I mean, that chasing gets you like that. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't been convicted yet. Puck was legend, but not only U.S., but the entire world he was. He is. <clears throat> All right, guys, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Pretty interesting. Uh, I, I literally just found out that he was arrested if you, like, 30 minutes ago, so I pulled out the video. And yeah, guys, we gotta find out more about the case. We will be following the case as well. But you know, I was gonna probably take years for this thing to be settled, which is fine. Later, guys.